Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa was a Roman statesman, general and architect. He was a close friend, son-in-law, and lieutenant to Augustus and was responsible for the construction of some of the most beautiful buildings in the history of Rome and for important military victories, most notably at the Battle of Actium against the forces of Mark Antony and Cleopatra. As a result of these victories Octavian became the first Roman emperor, adopting the name of Augustus. Agrippa assisted Augustus in making Rome a city of marble and renovating aqueducts to give all Romans from every social class access to the highest quality public services. He was responsible for the creation of many baths, porticos and gardens and was once thought to have commissioned the construction of the Pantheon. Agrippa was also father-in-law to the second emperor Tiberius, maternal grandfather to Caligula, and maternal great-grandfather to the emperor Nero. Early life Agrippa was born between 23 October and 23 November in 6462 BC, in an uncertain location. His father was perhaps called Lucius Vipsanius Agrippa. He had an elder brother whose name was also Lucius Vipsanius Agrippa, and a sister named Vipsania Polla. The family had not been prominent in Roman public life. However, Agrippa was about the same age as Octavian, and the two were educated together and became close friends. Despite Agrippa's association with the family of Julius Caesar, his elder brother chose another side in the civil wars of the 40s BC, fighting under Cato against Caesar and Africa. When Cato's forces were defeated, Agrippa's brother was taken prisoner but freed after Octavian interceded on his behalf. It is not known whether Agrippa fought against his brother in Africa, but he probably served in Caesar's campaign of 4645 BC against Gnaeus Pompeius, which culminated in the Battle of Munda. Caesar regarded him highly enough to send him with Octavius in 45 BC to study in Apollonia with the Macedonian legions. While Caesar consolidated his power in Rome, in the fourth month of their stay in Apollonia the news of Julius Caesar's assassination in March 44 BC reached them. Agrippa and another friend, Quintus Salvidianus Rufus, advised Octavius to march on Rome with the troops from Macedonia, but Octavius decided to sail to Italy with a small retinue. After his arrival, he learned that Caesar had adopted him as his legal heir. Octavius at this time took Caesar's name, but modern historians refer to him as Octavian during this period. Rise to power. After Octavian's return to Rome, he and his supporters realized they needed the support of legions. Agrippa helped Octavian to levy troops in Campania. Once Octavian had his legions, he made a pact with Mark Antony and Lepidus, legally established in 43 BC as the Second Triumvirate. Octavian and his consular colleague Quintus Pedius arranged for Caesar's assassins to be prosecuted in their absence, and Agrippa was entrusted with the case against Gaius Cassius Longinus. It may have been in the same year that Agrippa began his political career, holding the position of Tribune of the Plebs, which granted him entry to the Senate. In 42 BC, Agrippa probably fought alongside Octavian and Antony in the Battle of Philippi. After their return to Rome, he played a major role in Octavian's war against Lucius Antonius and Fulvia Antonia, respectively the brother and wife of Mark Antony, which began in 41 BC and ended in the capture of Perusia in 40 BC. However, Salvidianus remained Octavian's main general at this time. After the Perusina War, Octavian departed for Gaul, leaving the Gripper as urban praetor in Rome with instructions to defend Italy against Sextus Pompeius, an opponent of the Triumvirate who was now occupying Sicily. In July 40, while Agrippa was occupied with the Ludi Apollinaires that were the Praetor's responsibility, Sextus began a raid in southern Italy. Agrippa advanced on him, forcing him to withdraw. However, the triumvirate proved unstable, and in August 40 both Sextus and Antony invaded Italy. Agrippa's success in retaking Sipontum from Antony helped bring an end to the conflict.
Agrippa was among the intermediaries through whom Antony and Octavian agreed once more upon peace. During the discussions Octavian learned that Salvidianus had offered to betray him to Antony, with the result that Salvidianus was prosecuted and either executed or committed suicide. Agrippa was now Octavian's leading general. In 39 or 38 BC, Octavian appointed Agrippa governor of Transalpine Gaul, where in 38 he put down a rising of the Aquitanians. He also fought the Germanic tribes, becoming the next Roman general to cross the Rhine after Julius Caesar. He was summoned back to Rome by Octavian to assume the consulship for 37 BC. He was well below the usual minimum age of 43, but Octavian had suffered a humiliating naval defeat against Sextus Pompey and needed his friend to oversee the preparations for further warfare. Agrippa refused the offer of a triumph for his exploits in Gaul, on the grounds, says Dio, that he thought it improper to celebrate during a time of trouble for Octavian. Since Sextus Pompeius had command of the sea on the coasts of Italy, Agrippa's first care was to provide a safe harbour for his ships. He accomplished this by cutting through the strips of land which separated the Lacus Lucrinus from the sea, thus forming an outer harbour, while joining the Lake Avernus to the Lucrinus to serve as an inner harbour. The new harbour complex was named Portus Julius in Octavian's honour. Agrippa was also responsible for technological improvements, including larger ships and an improved form of grappling hook. About this time, he married Caecilia Pomponia Attica, daughter of Cicero's friend Titus Pomponius Atticus. In 36 BC, Octavian and Agrippa set sail against Sextus. The fleet was badly damaged by storms and had to withdraw. Agrippa was left in charge of the second attempt. Thanks to superior technology and training, Agrippa and his men won decisive victories at Mila and Norlocus destroying all but 17 of Sextus's ships and compelling most of his forces to surrender. Octavian, with his power increased, forced the triumvir Lepidus into retirement and entered Rome in triumph. Agrippa received the unprecedented honor of a naval crown decorated with the beaks of ships, as Dio remarks. This was a decoration given to nobody before or since. Life in public service Agrippa participated in smaller military campaigns in 35 and 34 BC, but by the autumn of 34 he had returned to Rome. He rapidly set out on a campaign of public repairs and improvements, including renovation of the aqueduct known as the Aqua Marcia and an extension of its pipes to cover more of the city. Through his actions after being elected in 33 BC as one of the Edela, the streets were repaired and the sewers were cleaned out, while lavish public spectacles were put on. Agrippa signalled his tenure of office by effecting great improvements in the city of Rome, restoring and building aqueducts, enlarging and cleansing the Cloaca Maximus, constructing baths and porticos, and laying out gardens. He also gave a stimulus to the public exhibition of works of art. It was unusual for an ex-consul to hold the lower-ranking position of Edel, but Agrippa's success bore out this break with tradition. As emperor, Augustus would later boast that he had found the city of brick but left it of marble, thanks in part to the great services provided by Agrippa under his reign. Antony and Cleopatra, Agrippa was again called away to take command of the fleet when the war with Antony and Cleopatra broke out. He captured the strategically important city of Methan at the southwest of the Peloponnese, then sailed north, raiding the Greek coast and capturing Corsera. Octavian then brought his forces to Corsera, occupying it as a naval base. Antony drew up his ships and troops at Actium, where Octavian moved to meet him. Agrippa meanwhile defeated Antony's supporter Quintus Nasidius in a naval battle at Petri. Dio relates that as Agrippa moved to join Octavian near Actium, he encountered Gaius Cecius, one of Antony's lieutenants, who was making a surprise attack on the squadron of Lucius Tarius, a supporter of Octavian. Agrippa's unexpected arrival turned the battle around. 
As the decisive battle approached, according to Dio, Octavian received intelligence that Antony and Cleopatra planned to break past his naval blockade and escape. At first he wished to allow the flagships past, arguing that he could overtake them with his lighter vessels and that the other opposing ships would surrender when they saw their leaders. Cowardice Agrippa objected that Antony's ships, although larger, could outrun Octavian's if they hoisted sails, and that Octavian ought to fight now because Antony's fleet had just been struck by storms. Octavian followed his friend's advice. On September 2, 31 BC, the Battle of Action was fought. Octavian's victory, which gave him the mastery of Rome and the empire, was mainly due to Agrippa. As a token of signal regard, Octavian bestowed upon him the hand of his niece Claudia Marcella Major in 28 BC. He also served a second consulship with Octavian the same year. In 27 BC, Agrippa held a third consulship with Octavian, and in that year, the Senate also bestowed upon Octavian the imperial title of Augustus. In commemoration of the Battle of Actium, Agrippa built and dedicated the building that served as the Roman Pantheon before its destruction in 80 AD. Emperor Hadrian used Agrippa's design to build his own Pantheon, which survives in Rome. The inscription of the later building, which was built around 125, preserves the text of the inscription from Agrippa's building during his third consulship. The years following his third consulship, Agrippa spent in Gaul, reforming the provincial administration and taxation system, along with building an effective road system and aqueducts. Late life Agrippa's friendship with Augustus seems to have been clouded by the jealousy of Augustus' and nephew Marcus Claudius Marcellus which was probably fermented by the intrigues of Livia, the third wife of Augustus, who feared his influence over her husband. Traditionally it is said the result of such jealousy was that Agrippa left Rome, ostensibly to take over the governorship of eastern provinces, a sort of honorable exile, but he only sent his legate to Syria, while he himself remained at Lesbos and governed by proxy though he may have been on a secret mission to negotiate with the Parthians about the return of the Roman legion's standards which they held. On the death of Marcellus, which took place within a year of his exile, he was recalled to Rome by Augustus, who found he could not dispense with his services. However, if one places the events in the context of the crisis in 23 BC it seems unlikely that when facing significant opposition and about to make a major political climb down, the Emperor Augustus would place a man in exile in charge of the largest body of Roman troops. What is far more likely is that Agrippa's exile was actually the careful political positioning of a loyal lieutenant in command of a significant army as a backup plan in case the settlement plans of 23 BC failed and Augustus needed military support. Moreover, after 23 BC as part of what became known as Augustus' a second constitutional settlement, Agrippa's constitutional powers were greatly increased to provide the Principate of Augustus with greater constitutional stability by providing for a political heir or replacement for Augustus if he were to succumb to his habitual ill health or was assassinated. In the course of the year Proconsular Imperium, similar to Augustus a power, was conferred upon Agrippa for five years. The exact nature of the grant is uncertain but it probably covered Augustus or imperial provinces, east and west, perhaps lacking authority over the provinces of the Senate. That was to come later, as was the jealously guarded tribuneship attestors, or powers of a tribune of the plebeians. These great powers of state are not usually heaped upon a former exile. It is said that Mecenas advised Augustus to attach Agrippa still more closely to him by making him his son-in-law. He accordingly induced him to divorce Marcella and marry his daughter Julia the Elder by 21 BC, the widow of Marcellus equally celebrated for her beauty, abilities, and her shameless profligacy. In 19 BC, Agrippa was employed in putting down a rising of the Cantabrians in Hispania. 
In 18 BC, Agrippa's powers were even further increased to almost match those of Augustus. That year his proconsular imperium was augmented to cover the provinces of the Senate. More than that, he was finally granted tribuneship attestas, or powers of a tribune of the plebeians. As was the case with Augustus, Agrippa's grant of tribune mission powers was conferred without his having to actually hold that office. These powers were considerable, giving him veto power over the acts of the Senate or other magistracies, including those of other tribunes, and the power to present laws for approval by the people. Just as important, a tribune's person was sacrosanct, or sacred, meaning that any person who harmfully touched them or impeded their actions, including political acts, could lawfully be killed. After the grant of these powers Agrippa was, on paper, almost as powerful as Augustus was. However, there was no doubt that Augustus was the man in charge. Agrippa was appointed governor of the eastern provinces a second time in 17 BC where his just and prudent administration won him the respect and goodwill of the provincials, especially from the Jewish population. Agrippa also restored effective Roman control over the Sumerian Chersonese during his governorship. Agrippa's last public service was his beginning of the conquest of the Upper Danube River region, which would become the Roman province of Pannonia in 13 BC. He died at Campania in 12 BC at the age of 51. His posthumous son, Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa Posthumus, was named in his honor. Augustus honored his memory by a magnificent funeral and spent over a month in mourning. Augustus personally oversaw all of Agrippa's children's educations. Although Agrippa had built a tomb for himself, Augustus had Agrippa's remains placed in Augustus' own mausoleum. Legacy Agrippa was also known as a writer, especially on the subject of geography. Under his supervision, Julius Caesar's dream of having a complete survey of the empire made was carried out. Agrippa constructed a circular chart, which was later engraved on marble by Augustus and afterwards placed in the colonnade built by his sister Polla. Amongst his writings, an autobiography, now lost, is referenced. Marriage is an issue Agrippa had several children through his three marriages. By his first wife, Caecilia Attica, he had a daughter, Vipsania Agrippina, who was to be the first wife of the emperor Tiberius, and who gave birth to a son, Drusus the Younger. By his second wife, Claudia Marcella Major, he may have had a daughter, whose existence remains unclear, but this hypothetical figure is referred to as Vipsania Marcella. It is possible that this daughter may have been a second daughter by Caecilia Attica, but there is no information to say one way or the other. The existence of this daughter rests solely on Publius Quinctilius Varus being mentioned as the son-in-law of Agrippa in Augustus a funeral oration. For Agrippa, by his third wife, Julia the Elder, he had five children. Gaius Caesar, Julia the Younger, Lucius Caesar, Agrippina the Elder, and Agrippa Posthumus. Descendants through his numerous children, Agrippa would become ancestor to many subsequent members of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, whose position he helped to attain, as well as many other reputed Romans. 1. Vipsania Agrippina I, 36 BC AD 20, had at least six children by two husbands A. Drusus Julius Caesar, 13 BC AD 23, had three children I. Julius Caesarus, AD 5 to 43, had at least one child A. Rubelius Plautus, AD 33 to 62, may have had several children too. Tiberius Julius Caesar, Gemellusa, AD 19-37 or 38, died without issue 3. Germanicus Julius Caesar II, Gemellusa, AD 19-23, died young B. Gaius Asinius Pollio, died AD 45, children unknown C. Marcus Asinius Agrippa, died AD 26 D. Asinius Saloninus, died AD 22 E. Servius Asinius Sella, died before mid-47, had one child A. Asinius Agrippina F. Asinius Gallus II. 
Gaius Julius Caesar, 20 BC, AD 4, died without issue 3. Vipsania Julia, 19 BC, AD 28, had two children, A. Aemilia Lepida, 04 BC, AD 53, had five children, I. Marcus Junius Silanus Torquatus, 14 to 54, had one child, A. Lucius Junius Silanus Torquatus the Younger, 50 to 66, died young too. Junior Calvina, 15 to 79, died without issue 3. Decimus Junius Silanus Torquatus. 64 without issue IV. Lucius Junius Silanus Torquatus the Elder. 49 without issue V. Junior Lepida, California 18 to 65, issue unknown B. Unnamed illegitimate son. 88 4. Lucius Julius Caesar, 17 BC, AD 2, died without issue 5. Vipsania Agrippina 2, 14 BC, AD 33, had nine children, of whom three died young. A. Nero Julius Caesar, 6 to 30, died without issue B. Drusus Julius Caesar, 7 to 33, died without issue C. Gaius Julius Caesar, BEF, AD 12 BEF, AD 12 D. Gaius Julius Caesar, 12 to 41, had one child, I. Julia Drusilla, 39 to 41, died young E. Julia Agrippina, 15 to 59, had one child, I. Nero Claudius Caesar, 37 to 68, had one child, A. Claudia Augusta, Jan. 63 April 63, died young F. Julia Drusilla, 16 to 38, died without issue G. Julia Lavilla, 18 to 42, died without issue H. Tiberius Julius Caesar, or between Gaius Caesar and Julia Agrippina, I, son. 6 Agrippa Posthumus, 12 BC, AD 14. Died without issue There have been some attempts to assign further descendants to a number of the aforementioned figures, including two lines of Assani descended from Gaius Assanius Pollio and Marcus Assanius Agrippa respectively, a daughter named Rubellia Bassa to Julia, who may have been a daughter of Gaius Rubellius Blandus by an earlier marriage. And, finally, a series of descendants from Junior Lepida and her husband, Gaius Cassius Longinus. However, all of these lines of descent are extremely hypothetical and lack any evidence to support a connection to the descendants of Agrippa.